Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back and uh, welcome back to our lectures on immunology <coughs> and we keep continuing uh, talking about uh, the B cell developments. So for the last two lectures we were, def uh, we were discussing mostly about the maturation of the B cells. So how the B cells uh, they become uh, from the pro B cells. Uh, there is a progenitor B cells, they become the pre B cells, there is a precursors and then finally they become immature B cells. In our last lecture we have discussed the, uh, the genetic events that are occurring particularly the VDJ recombination uh, that is occurring in the different steps or in the different stages of the B cell maturation within the bone marrow. So all these stages they occur in the bone marrow but as we know uh, or we have <coughs> already uh, discussed in uh, our previous lectures that the B cell activation occurs in the lymphoid organ for in the, in the lymph node for example and the activation and its differentiation. So then it differentiates and then it class switches the antibody class switching occurs all these things these events actually occur in the which falls under the whole uh, uh, humoral response. So this whole humoral response which involves the activation and the differentiation proliferation and differentiation of the B cells this entire thing occurs in the lymph node. So now what happens what is the fate of a mature uh, uh, B cell as we discussed in the last lecture that the immature cells once uh, they leave the bone marrow. Uh, they have the, their main fate, they, their fate is determined by their interaction with the different self antigens. That means they interact with the antigens of the own system, the cell surface antigens and other uh, soluble antigens and then they undergo different fates. So only a very small percentage of these B cells that are actually produced from the bone marrow are selected for the later stages. So they, they pass uh, the initial screening and they are allowed to uh, go to the um, lymph node uh, and the periphery and then they go to the lymph node and then they are allowed to interact with the antigens and then initiate the humoral response. Now the thing is uh, what exactly happens because these cells which enters the lymph node they are called the resting B cells. So they are in the resting situation in the G0 phase let us say. So what happens inside the lymph node? So we know that these cells they enter uh, the lymph node. So they will enter the lymph node by the afferent vessels and go out by the efferent vessels. And inside the lymph node as uh, I probably already told in one of my initial lectures we have this kind of germinal centers and these germinal centers are primarily they are located in the cortex region of the lymph node. So the lymph node if you have a kind of a closer look the structure is some little bit like this. And inside you have uh, you have the medulla, you have the paracortex, which is the primary. Uh, the paracortex is the primary region for the uh, development of the T lymphocytes, or the T activation and uh, uh, differentiation of the T cells or the T lymphocytes. And the cortex region is mainly meant for the B cells and inside you have these kind of centers which 
we call the germinal centers. And these germinal centers are actually the centers of the development, the proliferation and the differentiation of the B cells. So, these uh, B cells which enters into the cortex region, they undergo activation. So, now these cells they are expressing on their surface the B cell receptor with the IgM and they with the help of some antigen with the help of the antigen and the Th cells or the T helper cells. So, there are T helper cells in the paracortex region which actually interacts with their T cell receptors and they send some signaling these mature these are mature B cells. So, these are mature B cells which are actually in resting state and these mature B cells then they get activated. So, they are activated by this kind of T helper cells they get activated and they enter into the germinal center and the germinal center has two regions one we call it the dark zone and the other one we call the light zone. So, these B cells the mature activated B cells then enters into the germinal center into the dark zone and inside the dark zone they undergo proliferation they start to proliferate and then there are somatic hypermutations and then these cells enter into the light zone. I am giving a very very brief overview we will discuss all these events in much more details uh, as we proceed with our lecture. So, these, these are called the centroblasts, the centroblasts in the dark zone and when they enter into the light zone they are the centrocytes and these centrocytes they are then selected for affinity mutation. So, uh, after this because there is somatic hypermutation in the dark zone then they will be se selected for affinity maturation. So, they will the high affinity cells will uh, survive what do you mean by high affinity cells. Uh, so, the high affinity cells primarily means those cells which has higher affinity for the antigen. So, the, 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 the antibodies expressed on the surface um, they undergo uh, mutations and these mutations render them either less uh, reactive or more reactive towards an antigen. So, that means their affinity either decreases or increases. So, if the affinity decreases those cells will undergo apoptosis. So, those cells will be killed they will die and those cells which survive that means those cells which has higher affinity towards the antigen those B cells whose uh, B cell receptors they have higher affinity for the antigens they will survive and now they will undergo a specific process called class switching. So, now they will switch classes and uh, so uh, an antibody class switching and once they undergo this antibody class switching they will now differentiate into different the plasma cells and the memory B cells. These plasma cells are mainly the secretors of the antibody. So, they secrete the antibody and the memory B cells they will have the IgG molecule and they will have the immunological memory. So, then they have differentiates into the, uh, the memory cells and the plasma cells. So, they will differentiate into memory and the plasma. So, let us see what are the, so this in, in, in this whole flow chart what, what, what I am showing here. So, there, is, there are two distinct processes, one, one part I am showing this in this part we call this the activation. This is the activation part and this part is the differentiation. So, this part is the differentiation part of the B cells and this part here we call it the maturation the B cell maturation which we have already uh, 
discussed. So, uh, so we can see here in this in this flow chart that the B cell undergoes at least three distinct processes. One is the maturation, then the activation, and finally the differentiation. Differentiation into the different uh, uh, antibody producing uh, B cells. So now. Uh, we, we have discussed about the maturation in, in our last lectures. In the last two lectures, we have discussed how the B cells they maturate uh, or develop in the bone marrow and they leave the bone marrow. Then they go to the peripheral organs, uh, goes to the lymph node, for example, and uh, there they will start to get activated. So, the lymph node. So, now look and let us look into the process of. Uh, the B cell activation in a bit more details. So, what happens or what are the signals that are actually responsible for activation of the B cells. So, before we start the, the first thing we need to mention is that a B cell can be activated by two distinct processes. One is a thymus dependent process another is a thymus independent process. Now, what is a thymus dependent thymus independent process? So, basically a thymus dependent process is a process in which the B cell gets activated by a direct interaction with a T cell or a T helper cell. So, with a physical interaction of the T helper cell. Whereas, in case of a thymus independent activation, it does not require a direct contact with a T helper cell. It does not require any physical uh, involvement or any physical contact with the T helper cell. There is no physical contact with the T helper cells. So, that is a thymus independent activation. So, if we classify the two different pathways, the thymus or the two different ways of activation, then of course, we come across a thymus independent or the TI, we also call it sometimes the TI process and a thymus dependent So, it is a thymus dependent process which is also called the TD process. Now, what we will discuss about the thymus dependent and the thymus independent processes separately. As we can understand the thymus dependent process relies on its interaction with the, uh, uh, with the T helper cells mostly. So, the thymus independent process is primarily uh, initiated or it is uh, actually works in case of certain kinds of antigens. For example, small antigens like the lipopolysaccharides LPS or in case of bacterial DNA or as well as in case of some repetitive sequences. Like some chains, some polysaccharides, some polysaccharide chains present on the surface cell on the cell surfaces. So, these are basically uh, activated directly, they are direct activators. So, they can directly activate the B cells. Now, this activation process occurs usually through the B cell receptor and what does the B cell receptor look like? So, the B cell receptor usually comprise of the IgM molecule linked to the 2 Ig alpha Ig beta, Ig alpha and Ig beta which are the signal transducing parts and so if there is an small antigen like this binding small antigen like a lipo lipopolysaccharide or a bacterial DNA for example, they can bind to this uh, B cell receptor and <coughs> for example, present on the uh, 
surface of a bacteria. If this is a bacterial surface and you have this kind of small antigens which can activate the B cell, they can activate the B cell directly via or using these receptors. So, this tra signal transduction uh, parts of the receptor uh, which is the Ig alpha and the Ig beta, they are responsible for this kind of signal transduction and they transduce the signal by a specialized domain in the cytosolic part of this Ig alpha and Ig beta which are known as the immunoreceptor tyrosine, the immunoreceptor tyrosine based activation motifs or the ITAMs. So, these ITAMs are present in this region which basically transduce the signal and leads to activation proliferation of the B cells which then produce the antibodies against these uh, antigens. Now, this process can again this thymus independent process can again be divided into two types of thymus independent processes. So, one is the type 1 thymus independent process, the other is the type 2 thymus independent process. So, these are basically, so this is also called the TI1 and there is a type 2 process which is the TI2. So, and basically these two types are classified on the basis of the type of antigen the B cell meets with. And type 1 antigens are usually the small antigens like the LPS for example, the lipopolysaccharides, the uh, 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 bacterial DNA for example, these are actually the small uh, antigens that fall under the type 1 thymus independent activation of the B cell and type 2 are mostly uh, these are the repetitive structures. This includes the repetitive structures um, and another major difference is that in case of type 2, there is no requirement of any help from any T cells. In case of type 2, it is it requires so type 1 does not require any help or any uh, indirect help from any T cells or any other cells of the immune system. In case of type 2, it requires help from other T cells as well as uh, to some extent from the dendritic cells. In a way, they do not interact physically with the T cells, but they require certain cytokines. So, there is requirement of cytokines. So, they require cytokines to be present in the vicinity for the activation process. So, these two activation processes type 1 and type 2 activation processes, these two processes basically the TI1 and TI2 falls under the thymus independent and this primarily depends on the type of the antigens. So, there are two types of the, the antigens are two classified uh, and from there they are called the type 1 uh, uh, thymus independent process or the type 2 uh, TI independent process and uh, they uh, primarily depends on the type of antigen that is interacting with the B cell receptors. Now, we come to the thymus dependent process. This is a much more elaborate process and this involves interaction of a mature B cell with the T helper cells and the specific type of T helper cells that are required for this thymus dependent process are the T follicular helper cells. If you remember about the T, uh, T uh, helper cell subsets we had discussed previously, then you will remember we have the effector cells, the Th1, Th2, Th17. So, these are the effector T cells and also we have a specific class of uh, uh, helper cells that we discussed about or we told about are the T follicular helper cells. And these follicular helper cells are uh, present in the germinal center. 
So, they are present in the germinal center in uh, and they help in the in the cortex in the germinal center they are present everywhere and they are actually required for activation as well as differentiation of the B cell. So, we will look into the process of the activation what exactly happens during the activation of the B cells. So, let us say this is a B cell. This is a B cell and this is a T cell. So, this is a T follicular helper cell TFH and this is the B cell. A mature B cell. So, as we know that a mature B cell expresses the IgM molecule, the IgM in the, the receptor on the surface and with the help of this IgM molecules on the surface, it can bind to the antigen and this antigen binding can lead to receptor cross linking. So, this normally the B cell is in the resting stage. The receptors are also in the resting stage. Once there is an antigen coming in, so this is let us say this is the antigen. Once it meets an antigen, what happens? It binds to the B cell receptor. Now, and as well as this, I, uh, this Ig alpha and the Ig beta subunits are also involved. Uh, you have the IgM which can bind to this, and this leads to the internalization. So, now this antigen is internalized you know that these cells can uh, B cells can also phagocytos they can also internalize antigens. So, they will now internalize the antigens. So, the antigen is internalized inside and is degraded. And this antigen is now presented by the B cell on the surface of the B cell. It is presented by the class 2 MHC, the MHC2, MHC class 2. It presents the antigen on the surface by the class 2 MHC. And this is recognized by the by the T cell receptors. So, the MHC class 2 after, internali after internalization of this antigen by the B cell that is internalized and then presented on the surface by class 2 MHC molecules. Once it is presented on the surface by the class 2 MHC molecules, the T cells, the T cell, the T follicular uh, helper cells which are basically the CD4 cells having the CD4 co-receptors, they can now recognize by their T cell receptors. They bind to the MHC class 2 molecule and then there are additional interactions. What are the additional interactions? We know a little bit because we have learnt about it earlier as well. So, they express this T helper cells, they express on their surface the CD28 and the B cells they have on their surface the B7. So, there is B7 to CD28 interaction as well as there is CD40 ligand which is expressed on the surface of the T cells. So, we have the CD40 ligand and that binds to the CD40 which is expressed on the surface. So, this is the CD40 binding to the CD40 ligand or the CD40L. So, the CD40 ligand is the CD40L is expressed on the surface of the T follicular helper cells. So, that CD40L binds to the CD40. So, now once these interactions are complete that is when this MHC class 2 molecule expressing this antigen uh, uh, presenting this antigen on the surface with the class 2 MHC molecules uh, on the surface of the B cells, 
that interacts with RTCR with a T cell receptor, then there are more interactions, more supporting interactions like the B7, B7 to CD28 interaction, CD28 present on the T cells. So, this is the TFH cell, remember this is the T follicular helper cells which on their surface has the CD28 uh, and uh, that interacts with the B7 which has the CD40 ligand that interacts with the CD40, the CD40 is present on the surface of the B cell and that leads to once these interactions are complete there is signaling which leads to the uh, release of a cytokine, a specialized cytokine which is the interleukin 21. We will discuss about the cytokines later on. I told you in uh, one of my previous lectures that cytokines are one of the very, very important uh, effector molecules. They are one of the very, very important effector molecules of the immune system that actually uh, mediates all types of functions. So, IL-21 is one of the such molecules and this IL-21 has many, many roles in the B cell activation and differentiation. So, one of the primary roles of this IL-20 is that it activates the transcription factor STAT, STAT3. So, there is activation of the transcription factor, the STAT3. You probably have learned about the STAT transcription factors that is a JAK STAT pathway where you have the JAK kinase and the STAT. We will also discuss about the JAK stat pathway uh, more in details when we will be talking about the um, cytokines particularly. So, the STAT3 is then uh, activated. So, there is activation of the transcription factor STAT3 by upon induction of the interleukin 21. So, interleukin 21 comes when there is uh, activation of this, this thymus dependent activation occurs. Then there is IL21 and then there is STAT3 and what the STAT3 do is it now uh, regulates the gene expression. So, it now enhances gene expression of those genes uh, that are responsible for enhancing the B cell proliferation. So, now this will uh, lead to the enhancement of or control or regulation of the gene expression and that will lead to proliferation, proliferation of the B cells. So, now the B cells which were actually in the resting state will undergo proliferation, will undergo mitosis. So, now they will start to proliferate and they will produce many, many, many of these B cells that is the centroblasts. And we will discuss about the centroblasts and the reactions in the dark and the light zone in our later classes uh, how this occurs and what is the role of this. So, now they will start to proliferate in the germinal center. So, now they proliferate inside the germinal center in the dark zone and, and then they start expressing certain receptors on their surface. We will discuss in about this receptor. So, they now uh, start to express certain chemokine receptors on their surface. Uh, we will discuss about these uh, receptors and their expression and the role of these chemokines in our upcoming lectures. So, now they will finally undergo proliferation and then they will have somatic hypermutation, affinity selection and finally they will differentiate into the plasma cells and the memory cells. So, the final step is, so we are skipping many of the steps in between, in between there is a lot of other steps involved here in this, in this region after the proliferation, these cells will then move to the light zone and then there will be selection based on the affinity and then there will be class switching and after all these uh, events have occurred, there will be finally formation of the plasma cells with the specific antibodies and there will also be formation of the B cells expressing the IgG molecules, uh, the memory B cells, the memory and the plasma cells. So, this is, so this part, 
in this last part after the proliferation part we have not discussed yet so we have only discussed about the activation part what is the activation or how the activation of the b cell occurs so if we quickly look uh, again into the uh, whole thing quickly so the b cell activation occurs in at least two different ways uh, one is the thymus uh, in independent way uh, where you have which is mostly activated by this lipopolysaccharides, the bacterial DNA, some repetitive sequences and this occurs uh, via signaling from the signaling subunits of the uh, B cell receptor that is uh, this is the IgM which can bind to the surface antigens like this, this small, small antigens and the signaling occurs through this uh, Ig alpha, Ig beta and primarily through this item region which is the immunoreceptor tyrosine based activation motifs. Uh, this, these motifs they transduce the signal from this Ig alpha, Ig beta and that helps in the um, activation of the B cells. Now this activation process the thymus independent activation process can actually occur in two different ways there is a type 1 process and the type 2 process and primarily depends on the different types of antigens that are being presented or that are being recognized by the receptors. So the small uh, molecules like the DNA or the lipopolysaccharides they fall under the type, under the type 1 and the type 2 are mostly the repetitive structures long uh, large polysaccharides uh, these falls under the uh, type 2 and one major difference between the type 1 and type 2 is that in the type 1 you do not require any intervention from any uh, T cells or any other cell types whereas the type 2 requires certain interventions from or helps from other uh, cell types like dendritic cells uh, mostly from the dendritic cells the um, uh, cytokines are being se uh, secreted which helps in the type 2 process. Then we come to the thymus dependent process. Now the thymus dependent process uh, uh, occurs or starts by internalization of the antigen. So the B cells they internalize they interacts first the antigen interacts with the IgM molecule or the receptors. Uh, and B cell receptors and then it internalizes the antigen, it processes the antigen and then presents it on the surface by the MHC class 2 molecules. And then this T follicular helper cells which are actually CD, CD4 expressing cells, the core receptor CD4 expressing cells, they immediately by their TCR, so the T cell uh, by the T cell receptor, this is the TCR, so by the TCR they immediately uh, uh, interacts with this um, MHC class 2. So, MHC class 2 uh, is recognized and then there are other, uh, certain other uh, co-stimulatory signals as well like the B7 to CD28 interaction, the CD40 to CD40 ligand interaction and all these interactions leads to the uh, secretion of interleukin 21, IL-21 and IL-21 is a very, very vital interleukin or a cytokine that is involved in the whole process of the B cell activation and proliferation. Now this IL-21 once it is secreted it helps in activation of the transcription factor STAT3. We will learn in our next lectures as I told how the cytokines actually work and most of the cytokines they work by activation of these JAK STAT pathways. So uh, this uh, IL-21 activates uh, transcription factor STAT3 which in turn helps in the proliferation of the B cells. Now the B cell starts to proliferate, starts to express on their surf surface uh, certain chemokine receptors which we will discuss in our next lecture what is the role of these chemokine receptors and finally this proliferating, uh, this proliferation occurs in the germinal center uh, mainly in the, uh, in the dark zone and then they undergo uh, somatic hypermutation. Uh, and then uh, affinity selection and class switching and finally they uh, transform into either they become plasma cells or the memory B cells. So this part we have not really uh, discussed today now, after the activation that is the differentiation part the proliferation and differentiation of the B cells we will be discussing in our next lecture. So uh, this is all from today's lecture we will be discussing uh, more in details about the uh, differentiation of the B cells, uh, the somatic hypermutation, affinity selection, all these things we will discuss in our next lecture. Thank you.